and welcome to our live broadcast from Munich. We are at the High End Show, the annual High End Show here in Munich. With me for this live broadcast, I have uh, Roland Hoffmann, who is a senior manager at the Dynaudio Academy. And we have uh, Otto Jørgensen, who's a product manager at Dynaudio. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about tweeters in general, but as you might have seen, we've also introduced our new anniversary loudspeaker, the Special 40. And that has a pretty interesting new tweeter from us called the Esota 40. But before we get into all of that, Roland, could you maybe talk a little bit about some of the principles behind how we have made tweeters in the past? Yeah, it's um, basically we we always use a soft dome tweeter. Mm. It's a coated soft dome. And there are many different tweeter principles out there in the market. Um, but when I already started, we were looking for the right balance out of everything a tweeter should be like. Mm. So it should have a light, right inner damping, it should be light, it should have a very fast response, but overall it has a very even frequency response. And many tweeter principles are good in one of these areas, mm. but the coated soft dome by principle it's very balanced, very good in all these areas. Okay. Is there any particular reason for this? Or? Yeah, if you just imagine a piece of, of metal which makes yeah. a metal dome, or a piece of thin plastic which makes a plastic dome, it has a resonance frequency on its own. Just okay. by imagine a piece of thin metal touching it, you will have some sound. Yeah. Imagine a piece of fabric, just mm. like textile. It makes no and you sound. touch it, it makes no sounds. Yeah. Only if you attach a voice coil and a magnet and a music signal, it reproduces sound, mm. which by principle is the better way to start with. Okay. And then we improved it, well, 40 years now, mm. uh, so we get better and better and better in doing such great soft dome tweeters. And I know that one of our tweeters, is, uh, the Esota Square, or Esota 2 as it also is called, has been celebrated for a long time. Can you talk a little bit about what's, what's special about the Esota 2? Basically, it's special because it's a very, very powerful neodymium magnet. Okay. So, and this is not about volume level or that it's louder than others, it's about control, control mm. over the voice coil. The voice coil is a, is a tiny thing and it's in the magnet gap. Yeah. So this is very light and it should move very accurately, very precisely. And that you can only achieve with a very strong neodymium magnet. Well, not only, but the better the magnet is, the stronger the magnet is, the better it's controlled yeah. and it sounds better. Okay. And then we have Many, many things. Uh, could talk a whole day about our <laughs> tweeters. It's about the coating, it's about the fabric, it's about mm. the dome shape, basically everything. And you cannot achieve that quality level if you just buy tweeters from yeah. the supplier. Okay. You have to develop mm. and continue improving. And we've done that for 40 years now, building it in-house uh, right. and, and developing. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's kind of where we are at now. With, with traders, but today we've introduced something brand new, the uh, the Special 40, with with a, a new trader called the Esotar 40, and Otto, you've been involved in the development of that. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about it? Um, yes, what we actually did in the Esotar 40 was, if you look at an Esotar 2, which is our mm. uh, top of the line tweeter. Um, compared to this tweeter, the SOTAR mm. 40, the back chamber on the SOTAR 2 is actually a more advanced uh, model. It's okay. an aluminum back chamber, this is a plastic back chamber. So we basically started out with this, um, but this part is completely different. Okay. Uh, so we improved a lot of things about this. The, uh, the yoke, which is called, where the, you have the airflow underneath the dome, um, is um, redesigned, so we have a better airflow mm from the dome uh, backwards. I mean, what's actually important is, of course, the sound coming out yeah. of the front, but how to determine mm -hmm. the right sound, how to get less distortion. Mm -hmm. You have to control the sound that's coming from behind the dome. So the airflow into the, uh, the yoke piece is different. The but can you maybe just, for my sake, explain what you have here, because you're talking about a yoke, but is yes. the magnet as well? Or? Yes, of course. If you are looking at this part, is actually the neodymium magnet. Okay. What's interesting about this is that when you talk about neodymium tweeters from many other uh, companies, you might have a very small neodymium because mm. you can make neodymium very small compared to ferrite. Okay. So uh, in our tweeters, we have a very large neodymium uh, mm. uh, magnet. So for a neodymium magnet, this is extremely large, especially in a tweeter. Um, so that, that's the main part of it. And then you have the yoke, which is sitting inside this magnet. So that's, that the, controls, that's, that's this piece here? Well, it's actually this metal piece okay. that controls the, the airflow 
behind the dome to, mm. uh, that, to release it into the back chamber. So we can dampen these yes. uh, sounds coming from the back of the chamber to avoid them to be reflected and coming back okay. out, out to the dome. That would create distortion. Most magnets are just a magnet ring. Yeah. Right here you can see it has been shaped for airflow. So that's really one advantage. So that step. optimizes how the air goes through it? Yeah. 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 Yes. And this is, this is the main improvement in the ASOTAR 40. That is that's airflow that's coming behind it. Okay. So we, are, uh, we have a lower resonance frequency, uh, which again creates less distortion mm. and makes it easier to make a blend together with the woofer. Okay. So you get a better sounding mid-range because of this mm. improved airflow. And for this particular uh, part of, of the sound, it's actually better than in uh, ISOTAR 2. Uh, it's an improved version. Um, but then on the ISOTAR 2 you have a different back chamber. Okay. So you get something that's different. Uh, in some areas uh, it's improved, especially in the lower frequencies. Mm. Well, I think that we're talking about this might be a little bit better than what we have in the ESOTAR 2, but the, uh, the the back piece being better in the ESOTAR 2. So for many people, I guess, the number one question now is, well, which is better? Can you say that one is better than the other, or are they just fundamentally different? No, I would say they're different. Yeah. Uh, they, they, have, uh, they have advantages in different areas. Don't forget that the ESOTAR 2 belongs to a higher range from yeah. contour, especially confidence, evidence yeah. platinum. That's where the ESOTAR 2 is used. And so you can say some things are a bit simplified, but then you cannot stop our engineers. They oh. came up with ideas to make some parts even better than the mm. ESOTAR 2. Not overall, but in, in many details. And then in the end we said, it's a special 40 model. So we cannot say, ah, no, don't, don't let's make us so good. We, we have to improve. It's our yeah. anniversary speaker. It has to be special. So then we came up with this. Uh, ESOTAR 40, mm. which in some parts is better, in some the ESOTAR 2 is the ESOTAR 2. And the thing with the uh, ESOTAR 40 tweet is that it's exclusive for this uh, particular loudspeaker, right? Yes. So, so it's only in this one model that you can experience it. Yeah. So it is uh, as special as the special 40. Yes. Yes. An um, anniversary tweet. Yes. <laughs> uh, guys, we also have some. Uh, a lot. We have a lot of questions from people, obviously. So I think that we should start to to dive into some of those. Um, Roland, you touched uh, briefly upon there being different uh, principles for for tweeters, right? Uh, yeah. There's a dome, obviously, and then there's something called ribbons. Yeah, a ribbon tweeter. And uh, yeah, many people talk about ribbon tweeter, and if you look at a tweeter principle on its own, mm. you will find, as I said, many advantages and different principles, yeah. like the ribbon tweeter. And it's, it's very good on access, and it has some frequency areas where it's actually quite good. Mm. But the tweeter is not a loudspeaker. The tweeter is a tweeter. Yeah. So first of all, it has to be good on access and off access. if you look at the tweeter alone. Mm. It has a very good sound radiation, a good phase response, a good step response, a good frequency response. So many things which are principally better overall in a coated soft dome. But the even more important part is there's a tweeter and a, and a woofer and they have to be somehow alike. They have to perform together. Mm. And a ribbon tweeter would perform perfect with a ribbon woofer. There's no such thing. Yeah. So yeah. a ribbon tweeter is good on its own, but it will never really have the, this, the seamless integration to the woofer because it radiates different, the sound mm. dispersion is different, the on-axis, off-axis performance is completely different than any, any woofer. So you cannot really make a, a very balanced overall loudspeaker out of that. Okay, and so so with the dome tweeter, we are able to make the better integration with the woofer. That's what I'm hearing you say, right? Yeah, especially in the in the special 40, but basically in all our models, mm. our tweeters can go can reach very very low in the frequency, right down to the mid range. Okay. Our woofers can they they very high up into mm. the mid range. So the the blend over the crossover of our tweeters and our woofers are exceptionally good. Mm. Not in this. Is it a 40, but it isn't in 40 and even one step further in this regard. But say the, the special 40 is basically a celebration of, of what we have been good at uh, yeah. for 40 years, and that is specifically this, the this frequency trend the and being, being good in all areas, not just in single areas okay. like high, high frequency response. We're not looking at good high frequency response, we're looking at the best sound overall. Okay. That's because our ears are not just listening in frequency response. Many people don't talk about the frequency response and it has to be linear. There are so many different areas where a speaker has to perform good. Mm. And that's all we can hear. So it's not, it's not something to measure right, it's something that has to sound right. Mm. And that's, that's a different thing. Okay. 
Okay. I want to move on to, to a question that's a bit similar. Um, it's about you know trying different materials. Um, it's something we've gotten the question before, and now it came up again uh, with us asking for, for more questions. And have we ever tested anything else than uh, than let's say the the, the textile, the uh, dome that we're using at the moment? Well, yes. In development, uh, we always see lots of prototypes, mm. and, and they're always measuring different stuff and simulating different uh, uh, products in, on, on the computer systems as well. Uh, and the basic thing is that we are looking for, like in our woofer, we're looking for a material that is uh, stiff and light, yes. uh, but also well damped, mm. so that you don't have the ringing. Okay. So, so uh, we didn't, we haven't found a material that yet that works better than this for all these three combines, where the overall experience of it is better than than with this. Mm. Uh, again, sometimes if you measure stuff, you will find a measurement that looks like, oh, now we made the best tweet in the world. Um, <laughs> But then you start listening to it, yeah. and and you find that it, it doesn't actually sound right. Mm. Uh, that's actually a main, a big part of, of developing these drivers uh, yeah. and loudspeakers. That you can't measure everything. Uh, we have to really listen to it. And, and in the end, we haven't found a better solution yet. So that's what so, we're sticking with. Yeah. It's also interesting where we we often get new engineers fresh from university, and of course they have the same question, and mm. they they have other ideas. So we also have to prove that yeah. this is the right way to go. So we have to improve. Yeah, as well constantly. to make it better to constantly make it better and so we I think it's safe to say we convinced a, a handful of engineers who thought no I know fancy yeah. material and then in the end they admitted actually what you do in the ESOTA 2 and in the ESOTA 40 it's pretty good it's pretty good yeah. so and I guess that and this might be a bit uh, off base but with the new research and development center of obviously we we're able to measure a lot but I know that we are very keen on also listening to it and spending time combining the two aspects, right? I mean, in the new measurement chamber, we can make a, a full measurement of a loudspeaker in mm. like 20 minutes, which, which took days before. Yeah. So it's, it's very easy to make uh, some, some really nice measurements very quickly. Mm. Uh, but, but actually, the listening part it takes a lot longer time. We are spending days, weeks for, for listening for the same uh, changes where we just spend 20 minutes measuring the, the yeah. change, uh, but we can't just listen to it in 20 minutes and make decisions. So it's, it still takes a lot of time to find find it just mm. these things. It helps to have the measurement. You have to listen. And I guess that in the end, it's it's all about well, it's real people with uh, with real ears that, that sit there and listen to the product. So it has to sound great there and not necessarily just in a measurement chamber. Yeah and the capability to produce our own tweeters. So yeah. all the measurement and all the listening would be worth nothing if we then have to find the right tweeter in the catalogue. Mm. But with this knowledge, we can go into our R&D and into our production and do prototypes, build prototypes, mm. test out, and then in the end, make a better tweeter. Yes. So it's not just about R&D and listening. In the end, we do our own tweeters, and then when it all comes together, mm. and that's why our tweeters are so good. Great. Um, I want to move on to the final question that I have on my uh, in my little book here, and um, it's we have the new uh, the newer LYD monitors, right? And uh, someone asked, well, what's the difference, or how does a uh, LYD tweeter compare with the uh, ASO type tweeters? Um, basically, the overall concept is the same. Um, mm. We are not. Uh, changing the concept just because it's an active speaker. Okay. So um, the ESOTAR is a higher range of uh, drivers. We don't mm. use a neodymium magnet in, uh, in the LYD okay. tweeters. Part of that is because you don't really need the high sensitivity for an active system. Um, but that's not really, uh, I believe the question was also how does it relate to home speakers? So is there a difference between uh, LYD, which is a pro speaker, mm. compared to our home speakers? Uh, that's that's not that's not really a difference. There. Okay. Um, the, the job of the tweeter is exactly the same, uh, mm. whether or not it's in an active speaker or if it's in a, a pro speaker. The final tuning of the speaker can be somewhat different, but the actual driver is is basically the same technology. So in our pro lineup, we have uh, some models that use our lower ranges of, of mm. tweeters uh, and some models that use the higher ranges. So yeah. we also have pro monitors that use ESOTAR 2. And in that case, there's no difference at all between an ESOTAR 2 in a Contour and an ESOTAR 2 in an M3 no. pro monitor or an M5. 
it's it's the same way of developing and, and yes, the same from a, thing from that a we're point from. of view is exactly the same. Okay. Uh, also so. because all the things that as coded soft dome does well in a home in a listening room in a living room, mm. it also counts in the studio. Yeah. Uh, you have to people in the studio they have to listen for hours and hours and hours. It's their work. Mm. But basically also someone at home likes to listen for hours uh, to to the favorite music. So everything like a, a very balanced uh, frequency response, a very balanced sound radiation mm. into the room is as important in the living room as is in the studio. Okay, so so, so it's basically, or not yeah. basically, that's maybe but uh, putting it too strong, but it's similar. And having said that, we have, it sounds like now we have uh, only a few tweeters, so some for a pro and mm. some for a home and sometimes uh, the same. Actually, we have over, how many is it, how many different tweeters we have? Over, over 20 many. different tweeters, okay. um, not counting all the ones we did in the, in the past. past yeah. uh, so a lot of different tweeters. We can basically change so many things, like the length of the voice coil, the size of the magnet, mm. the shape of the magnet. It's neodymium or ferrite or ferrite plus. Many, many things we can change, and we do so from, from model to model. And it depends on what our goal is? Depends on what we need for this specific, specific speaker. Okay. Uh, so, so yes, there's a difference between the models, but that difference is, is, is not based on whether or not it's a pro model. Um, sometimes if you have a near-field monitor mm. like the LYD is, is designed for, uh, there are things that, that you don't have to take into account. You don't need as much output in a near-field mm. monitor because you're sitting close to the speaker, so ultimate uh, SPL uh, sound pressure is, is not really as important as if you're making a big three-way home speaker that's designed to go into big living rooms mm. where you're sitting far away from the speaker. Your, your compromises might be different, but the, the, the basic technology is exactly the same. Guys, I can see that uh, the time is, uh, is, is running out. So uh, I think that there's only one thing left to say, and that's uh, thanks for joining us for this live session. It was a pleasure having you on here. I hope you enjoyed you. it as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, thank all of you for asking fantastic questions. Thanks for watching. <laughs>